let's take a look at watershed delineation. The procedure involves using a topographic map, usually a 1 to 24,000 scale, to identify an area that contributes water to a flow system. This is the watershed for Steamboat Creek, which flows north from Washoe Valley until it joins the Truckee River, just east of the city of Reno. This watershed was delineated by the U.S. Geological Survey, and the map shows three gauges that the U.S. Geological Survey maintains to measure flow as the stream passes north. The watershed boundaries were originally delineated at a 1 to 24,000 scale. Geographic information systems can delineate watersheds automatically, given elevation information, usually in the form of Digital Elevation Models, or DEMs. However, it's very useful to be able to do this by hand as well, in part, to check what the computer has done, because computers are not always right. Topographic maps serve as the base and the most important source of information for delineating watersheds. Topographic maps pre present information about elevation. Elevation is usually depicted as a series of lines or contours that represent a line of equal elevation on the soil surface. In this illustration, the contours represent increments of 20 units, could be 20 feet or 20 meters. A series of contour lines represents a change in elevation. When contour lines are close together, the change in elevation is rapid, indicating that a slope is steep. When we delineate watersheds, we're interested in high points and low points. Watershed delineation is built on the principle that water flows downhill. Watershed boundaries delineate what's called a control volume of the system under consideration. The control volume represents the boundary between the things that we care about and things that we don't care about. In the case of a watershed, we care about areas that may be contributing to surface water flow. We don't care about things outside of the system. The watershed boundary represents a series of divides that encloses area that contribute to drainage at any other point in the watershed that we care about. A divide usually crosses contours at a right angle. The watershed boundary itself can be thought of as a line that connects the highest points around a surface water drainage system. Elevation contours represent topography or changes in elevation. One of the most important things to understand about this is that topography is developed by erosive forces, primarily water movement, and the contours themselves point back into upstream areas that may be contributing to the drainage that we're trying to delineate. The procedure for watershed delineation looks like this. First of all, we need to identify the outlet as a first point of reference. From the outlet, we work our way upstream identify topographic maxima, high points, adjacent to the mapped water course. Finally, we connect the dots, the topographic maxima, to develop a preliminary watershed boundary. 
It's important to realize that topographic maps have a limited amount of information that they can present. Perhaps one of the most important next steps after putting a preliminary boundary together is to take a look in person to see whether the watershed boundary drawn on a map actually makes sense in the real world. This means refining the watershed boundary with field information as needed. It's important to remember a couple of different things about a watershed boundary. First of all, except at the reference point, the point where water leaves the watershed, watershed boundaries never cross a surface water body such as a stream or a river or a lake. It's important to remember too that topography is something that's developed by erosive forces including water movement. So contours almost always point back into upstream areas. In addition to high points, there are a few other clues about where watershed boundaries should be. These include the existence of drainages next to the ones that are of interest. A watershed boundary should always separate one drainage from another. Finally, it's important to remember that maps are imperfect sources of information and sometimes it's necessary to get out and take a look in order to refine the watershed boundary.